Hello, this is Bern, and if despite your beauty and intelligence, you keep falling for men who are not good for you again and again, and you can't seem to stop this from happening, on today's video, I'm going to share how you can stop this painful process once and for all. Hello, this is Bern. Welcome to another edition of Bern. And this.com, a space where I share with ambitious, conscious, and heart-centered women how you can attract the man you want and the relationship you crave without the need for gimmicks, manipulation, or silly techniques. If this is your first time here and this type of topic really interests you, make sure to hit the subscribe button so you can be notified of new episodes as they come out. The first thing I'd like to share, if you fit the description that is this video is about, you don't understand why you keep falling for guys who are not good for you, even though you're smart, even though you know better intellectually, even though you are a great catch, then the first step I want you to take before the eight steps I'll be giving you right now is to understand what is your payoff. What does that mean? <laughs> if you find yourself repeating a behavior or going through a situation that's painful, but it's not stopping despite some intentionality on your part, then there's typically something you're gaining, secondary benefit that you might be unaware of that has you stuck on this pattern of behavior. So for example, many women find that the fear of getting their heart broken into a million pieces by somebody who saw them and witnessed them in their full splendor, the fear of abandonment is too high, so they choose guys who can't commit, at some level, they know the guy will never abandon them because he's not even in it to begin with. They get to avoid their deepest fear and get some level of connection. But so long as that is the greatest fear, the fear of maybe having your heart crushed by someone, you might continue choosing men who play it super safe and you can always point out and say, I would be willing to open my heart at the fullest, but I'm not because he's not giving what I need, so I'm going to stay safe right now. Sometimes that's taking place. Other times, you might find that the guy you're connecting with, the guy you feel so passionately attracted to, if not addicted to, might remind you of your dad in some way. Maybe he's abusive the way your dad was. Maybe he's narcissistic the way your mom was. Maybe he's the type of guy who's putting you down the way your cousin or uncle did when you were growing up again and again and again. And you may not recognize what it is, but maybe it's your pain and your trauma connecting to his trauma and you're calling it something great. You're saying, it's, there's something about him. I don't know. It's so, I feel so much passion, but maybe the passion is pain. So maybe it's not being not understanding that you're connecting to a painful part of him instead of the best in him. Another reason why women connect with men who can't give them what they want again and again is because they're deeply afraid of being alone. So if your highest fear in life is finding yourself alone and somebody brings you half of what you want, you might take that as a better alternative than being on your own. But after heartbreak and heartbreak, you might recognize that it's better to be alone than with the wrong person. Sometimes the discomfort of having to let go of something that feels good, not even just the fear of being alone, but the discomfort of a guy who lets you know how beautiful you are, who when you're feeling lonely and you have nothing else to do, can call him and he'll text you back. Maybe when you don't feel as beautiful, he'll want to have sex with you. Maybe that is enough in the moment to fill your cup with just enough to not take action. Now, once you identify what your biggest payoff is, and it's so important because without identifying this, you might do the steps, but keep going for that secondary gain. So it's important for you to figure out what this is. Um, now, before I go into the eight steps that I'm about to share with you, I want to invite you, if this is something that really interests you, this theme that I'm talking about right now, and you want to understand beyond intellectually understanding something, how you can step into the heart and the habits that allow you to get into the relationship you want, the first link in the description of this video will allow you to watch a free training that I created for you. So you click on that link, you'll see a page that looks like this. You enter your name and email and you can start watching my free training right away or when this video is finished. First thing you can do if you want to stop connecting with guys who are not good for you is stop telling yourself that your intuition is telling you to connect with them. Here's what I mean. I'm all for intuition. I'm all for following your gut at times. Sometimes you can be 
as I said earlier, connecting with the pain from your subconscious into his pain and calling it, my intuition's telling me to connect with him. And it's not your intuition. Sometimes it's your fear of being alone that's allowing you to connect with him, not your intuition. Sometimes fear and intuition are confused. Sometimes trauma and intuition are confused. So if you're a woman who for the last maybe two, three, four, five times of connecting with guys, they've not been the guy you want, but you keep telling yourself when you connect with them that your intuition is telling you to connect with them, your intuition is out of whack and you need to learn to retrain it. So for right now, I'm gonna ask you to stop using it for a little bit because you've been calling intuition something that it's not intuition. So that's the first step. Second step is figure out what the guy that you're interested in wants early on. Why is this important? The longer you spend with someone, and the more chemistry that's developed with someone, the less likely it is that you'll tell yourself the truth because you don't want to hear the truth when you like connecting with someone, that you might tell yourself, you might tell yourself the truth if at the beginning you ask him for what he wants, what he's looking for, not out of you, out of a relationship, and he tells you what it is, then if it's not what you want, then stop connecting with him. Don't try to convert him to your emotional religion, so to speak. Don't try to make him want something he doesn't want. Don't try to be the woman who changes his heart and brings him back to the reality that he wants someone for long term when he's sharing with you, he's not sure what he wants. So make sure to figure out what he wants and only move forward if and when you get a clear signal that what he wants is in the same vicinity or planet <laughs> what you want. Third one. And this is really important, and if you were to learn nothing else but this one, some of you, this is all you need. You need to start ranking his virtues higher than your need for chemistry. Many of the times where you connect with men who are not good for you, the real reason you're connecting with them, besides the stuff I'm sharing right now, is you feel something high and connected and special and alive, a little fire in your belly, butterflies in your stomach or in your heart. And that feeling can become addictive. That feeling can trump your mind and certain values. Because there's guys who take longer for you to feel the chemistry that you need to feel with them. There's guys who take longer to show every part of themselves. There's guys who are maybe not as charming as the guy that you feel so drawn to, but have virtues beyond chemistry, like integrity, <laughs> like generosity, Maybe he's a guy who has ambitious of the healthy versus my way or the highway kind. Maybe he's kind. Maybe he's someone who's conscious. So I need you to find out what are the true virtues you're seeking in a man, and I want you to rank them higher than chemistry. Am I saying to you, connect with a guy you feel no chemistry with long term? No. But I'm also saying if the primary mode of connection you have with men is chemistry, and you're clearly not getting what I want, you need to learn to rank something higher than chemistry because it's not working for you. Number four, I need to make sure, and I know this is hard sometimes, to stop treating a guy that you like, that you recently met as your boyfriend. And you might say, Burn, I don't treat him like my boyfriend. He's not my boyfriend. Well, sometimes you meet someone and you start dating only him. Not, you don't share it out loud. You don't even maybe end your profile online. You just stop caring. So this guy that you feel so intense about, becomes the guy that you think about when he asks you out you'd say yes to him above all others you may even lose interest to connect with other guys and the worst is when that becomes the case he's your de facto boyfriend without anything being written down you're not sure what he wants you're not sure if he's good for you but you feel this level of attachment that's making you take action in a way that probably will get you the opposite of what you want so make sure that you treat him step by step as a guy you're getting to know that you continue dating other men in the process that if he wants exclusivity and you're not ready for it or you don't know him well enough that you say no, that if he wants to take up all your time that you feel kind and connected and happy about it but you still say, hey, I need to pace myself in the process of getting to know you. Number five, I need you to find out, this is not, nothing to do with him, I need you to find out right now where in your life there's space to add emotional intensity. Why is this important? Because if your life right now, I connect with lots of women and say, well, everything in my life is good. Uh, my friends are good. My job is good. And my everything except relationships. And when I go deeper, everything's good, but not great. Everything's good, but not intense. So here's what happens. When things in your life are good, good meaning not awesome, and a guy shows up with a level of maybe variety or surprise or intensity that trumps the intensity in your life, 
No matter how much you want to say no, it's going to be really hard for you to say no when what he brings to the table is stronger, higher, more powerful than what you're experiencing in your life. So if in your life you can write an essay that says, here's why my life is good, but you're not feeling it. You're not feeling in love with your life. You're not feeling passionate about anything to a point, to the point of tears then there's space in your life as you get to connect with men. I'm not saying do that exclusively without connecting with men, but there's space in your life to add more intensity so that when a guy comes around that wants to bring you some intensity of the bad kind because the healthy intensity is in your life, you're less likely to say yes to him. Number six, take longer to get to know him before you say yes to being this guy's boyfriend. How long? A few months. Right? I mean, I'm, th there's not a rule that says this many number of months, but I'm going to say if it takes you less than three months to get to know him, there's probably a lot more that you need to know before you say yes to him. He's, and, and, and there's always exceptions to the rule. Uh, there's your Aunt Sally who met your Uncle Bob at the, I don't know, pool in uh, Wisconsin, and the first day they met, they decided in their minds, I'm going to marry this person, and they ended up marrying, and they were together for 50 years. I understand that kind of stuff happens, but for every one of those, there's far many more that didn't happen. So if you take the more courageous route of taking longer to get to know him, you'll be able to see more red flags or more awesomeness in him that makes you either commit with more passion or remove yourself before it's too late. Take longer to get physically involved with him. Same thing. If you get physically involved early on, you're going to stop saying certain things because it's convenient to stop saying them. Your heart will feel excited in a way where it's going to say, well, he has these three flaws, but eh, I want my fix right now. Give it to me. So you might do it subconsciously because it's something that it's exciting because it's something that's fun because you may be super hungry for that physical connection or that validation or somebody looking into your eyes and telling you how beautiful you are because you didn't experience it with the last three guys you were with. So that might be enough to get you to stop taking action. So because of that, I'm not saying don't have any physical contact with him. Be gradual in your process and definitely wait to have sex until you both are in a relationship. Uh, and I get the point that some people say, well, isn't it a risk? What if I get into a relationship and then we have sex and it's horrible? Well, that's a risk that can be worked on. You can get better at sex if it's the right partner, but the opposite risk of getting attached to a guy who gives you great sex, but it's bad for you and destructive to your life, that's a higher risk in my mind. So if there's two risks at play, take the one that is the lower risk for you of the two. Last one, number eight. Make sure when you talk to yourself and your friends about this man that you don't idolize him. Use the hypothesis method. What does this mean? There's so many women I have met throughout the years who seek out help and say, hey, guess what happened? I just met the most incredible guy I've met in my entire life or the last 10 years yesterday. It's like, there's no way you know that's true right now. You can be, you can hypothesize it's true and maybe it's true. You can project that it's true, but you don't know that it's true. So when you tell yourself that something is true that is not fully tested, you're going to more likely than not do things that you wouldn't have done otherwise. So my suggestion to you would be, as you connect with men, say, this man appears to be solid. This man appears to be generous. This man appears to be great. So you're not doubting him all the time, but you're also not saying he's great because I met him and I know just by looking at him that he's great. There's time, there's situations, there's challenges that will take place that will reveal in due time who he is and who you are to him. And if you pace yourself, if you stop telling yourself that your intuition is r running the game when maybe it's something else, you'll have a higher chance of avoiding some of the challenges you've been stepping into again and again. Hope you find this helpful, useful, and insightful. If you do, I'm going to ask you to do one thing. I want you to go beyond understanding this intellectually and stepping into it. And because of that, if you click on the first link on the description of this video, you'll find my latest training that shows you how to do just that. If you like this video, please click like or thumbs up, share it with a friend, subscribe to my channel. And here's a little tip I'll give you. If you like this content, if you subscribe already or you're subscribing right now, make sure to hit the little bell because that will make sure that YouTube shows you the videos as they come out instead of having months go by and then you see a new video and you say, well, where have you been? I've been here the whole time. You're just not seeing them. Uh, last but not least, if you find that this resonates with you, if what I'm sharing makes sense in a way that some other information doesn't, 
if you feel like you've done a lot to change your experience of pain and love, but it's still happening, you might highly benefit from specific hand-holding and help to the process. If you want to find out if I might be able to help you, second link on the description of this video will allow you to apply to work with me and if we're a fit, we'll get a chance to talk and I'll share with you how I can help you get what you want in a fraction of the time. Thank you so much for allowing me into your heart, your home, your phone, your feed, for listening to my rambling. Make it true. Make it uh, step into action in this, and I can promise you stronger results than you've had in the past. Hope you have an amazing day, and as always, I challenge you to live a full and a conscious life. Point number seven is